Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin on Sunday, April 5th, out walking the big guy. It's uh, Easter morning, there's probably an Easter egg hunt going on nearby. Uh, we've been to the last few years. It looks like we're skipping it this year because yesterday was really a marathon session with uh, of activities and everyone wants to sleep in a bit. But uh, I thought I'd uh, do a quick video on this walk talking about text editors. And uh, consistently people comment on my choice to use Vim, especially with me being a self-described amateur or part-time coder who doesn't do coding as my job but uses it as a means to an end. And so why would I pick one of the most uh, old school, long learning curve text editors? Well, it's because I'm actually well over 20 years. If you count all my, you know, time coding, I'm probably 25 or 30 years into uh, coding in some way or another from old Radio Shack TRS-80s and the Coleco Atom up to modern days, and I have been disrupted over that time countless, countless times, having to throw away one text editor after another. And a time came that I said, okay, isn't there a way around this insanity? And I've always known about VI and Vim, especially Vim since it started on the Amiga back in the early 90s by I think a guy named Bram Molinaire who, you know, helped evolve it into the modern heir apparent of VI, which for people who are not in the know, is the first full screen text editor made for Unix 40 years ago, close to 40 years ago, that managed to make its way into the standard for what Unix really is. And so it comes pre-installed on almost every distribution of Linux and Unix. And uh, the air apparent is VIM. You add the M, it stands for VI Improved. And it has a ton more features that make it uh, more pleasant to use, uh, like unlimited undos and, you know, full syntax color coding. And so I decided to take that up. I said, look, can I get away from having to keep relearning a macro system? Uh, Macros are probably the biggest pain point because they tap into your muscle memory. You get really good at recording and playing things back. And then there's all kinds of subtleties about how when things change based on context on each invocation of the macro. So your text editor or your integrated development environment is unlike other software you use because you use it all your life. Muscle memory evolves around it and there are such unlimited subtleties that give you advantages over time. And it's an opportunity to really rise to a sort of mastery with your tools in a way that few other fields uh, have unless they have very static, unchanging tools. Like if you're typing on a keyboard or if you're a martial artist using weapons or if you're a master carpenter or a musician and tech should totally be that same way. But for all you people out there using Sublime, I'll tell you, not gonna happen. Uh, Sublime will be disrupted probably in two to five years, just like TextMate was before it and everything else was before it. It's gonna be either a multi-platform issue or a windowing environment issue or some such nonsense that just makes it unable to survive the switch over to the next, uh, you know, big technology shift, but will Vim survive it? Well, certainly. Um, it's always going to be there. In fact, once you strip away all that, you know, graphical stuff and platform dependent stuff, what you have left is a command line, a type in interface. It's down there underneath with pretty much everything and uh, it doesn't go away. And if you want a text editor that doesn't go away either, that's where you learn to use it. You don't even need your uh, local host machine. You just get some uh, serial connection that has enough uh, ability to run a terminal software and you can log into anything, be it a computer or the future kinds of devices of the internet of things, which are all gonna have this, this capacity. And so if you want a text editor for life, 
that works a lot like a, a violin or a carpenter's, you know, box of tools uh, or, you know, bow staff and nunchucks, uh, you pick up Vim as opposed to Sublime because it's going to be with you for your entire life. It really is that powerful. And, you know, you uh, can achieve a kind of mastery that just doesn't exist on uh, platforms that get disrupted every once in a while. Or at least they only allow you to be master until the giant reset button is hit. So uh, that's why I'm on Vim and I'm about five years into it. And even after that, I would not describe myself as having mastered it. I am merely proficient at it. And you would go, oh my God, is that worth it a half decade just to achieve mere proficiency? Uh, yeah, it's worth it. I love it. It's a great environment. It's not for everybody. But if you consider yourself as kind of a hacker, someone who wants to get better and better at something over time with no upward, upper limits of what you could achieve if you stick with it, you choose Vim or Emacs. You choose one of the old archaic, classical, but immensely, almost mystically powerful text editors that have survived the test of time and you don't pick up the text editor du jour that happens to be sexy because it, you know, su supports multiple cursors, which is really nothing different than a global action in any other text editor. So anyway, those are my thoughts, and uh, thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon, and don't forget to try out Vim.